we will call the meeting to order at 807. <coughs> First order of business is a reception of guests. Mr. Parton, welcome. Thank you. How are you? And we'll also welcome Aaron, our principal, and Laurie. And would you like? Tiffany. Tiffany, nice to meet you. Do you know all of our names for the purposes of minutes? Them. You got that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, are there any agenda revisions that anyone would like to make, uh, given the late hour that we're starting? Uh, anything that anyone would like to suggest we table, or are we ready to just try to plug through and, and uh, see how much we can get done tonight? So I'm confused about, are we rescinding the policies, or are we tabling that to me? I think it was suggested we table them until next week. Okay, I was gonna, That's what I, heard. I was gonna defer to to Corinne on that one. Is that what you heard? That's what I heard, that there is nothing worth pushing through to make okay. sure that we okay. do have a policy in place. All right, then we will table 5.4. Will we? Um, we can do that when we get yep. there. Yeah, we can do that when we get there, good. All right, any other revisions to the agenda? Very good, any public comments or correspondence? Hearing none, we'll just note future meetings. We have an October 24th SU carousel meeting. So there is no local board meeting? I don't believe so. Oh, and I apologize. Going back to agenda review and revisions, did I hear in, that we should appoint one member to an articles committee and one member to a debt committee? Yes. I believe that was, we could do that tonight, and we should do that tonight. So maybe we'll add those as 5.5 uh, and 5.6. Um, well, speaking of which, um, with the resignation that we have, I think we need a third voting member at the WCSU meetings, because at the moment we only have two. Eric was our third voting member, yep. Yeah. Uh, how about a 5.7, appoint a third voting member to the SU board. All right. Sorry to keep piling them up. Nope, there, that's but. okay. While we're still on any other agenda revisions. Okay, no public com comments and correspondence. We've noted our future meeting. Uh, next up on the agenda is to approve the minutes of August 13th and September 10th. I'll make a motion to do so, okay. to pass both of those. Okay, is there a second? Wait, hold on. You had both sets. So on um, page five. Well, hold on, we need a second before you can. Oh, I'll second. All right, you and can end discussion, go ahead. Five, under 2.1, under the yep. um, number one, increased academic growth and success. So it should be changed to increased yes. academic and growth and instead of roles in growth and yeah strike roles in in input growth and success okay, okay. that's all I have um, any other discussion there was one I don't know. Uh, there was something hold on just a second please yep. Um, who was it when we were talking about, um, gosh, I totally can't remember what it was, but something expressed me that it wasn't really... I don't know. I've lost it. Okay. I should have made a note. Okay, we have a motion that's been made and seconded. Um, we have with the one correction. So, is there a motion to approve the minutes? of 8.13 and 9.10 as amended. 
or with those uh, one with the one correction pointed out by Vera. Would you accept an, an amendment to your yeah. motion? Yep, I yep, guess yep, to, yep, as sorry. amended. Yep, okay. I'm still looking. For All right. Yeah. Yes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed. All right. Uh, moving on to our discussion agenda, we have a board member vacancy included in your packet. Is an email from <coughs> Eric Chase, who uh, informs us that due to his uh, family needs in a difficult time, he is resigning from the school board. <coughs> Eric also wanted to thank everyone for their support during this time. And uh, he also added, please pave the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like <laughs> this <that>. way. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess technically we have to, <laughs> do we have to accept his resignation? I think we need a motion to well, do that. Despite how much I don't want to, yes, we really should because he really does need to have his time available for family. With regret. Mm -hmm. okay. with, with much regret. Absolutely. His, uh, his perspective will certainly be missed on the board. Um, so all those in favor of accepting Eric Chase's resignation from the board signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, no. Um, and that allows us to um, start looking for uh, someone to fill the vacancy. Um, I know, unfortunately, this has happened far too many times in the last <laughs> couple of years with this board. Uh, so I think the... Uh, uh, the central office has a protocol in place where they'll start advertising. I'll plan to put something out on Front Porch Forum um, and would ask that any of you and anyone perhaps watching the video tonight who has an interest in serving the board during these very interesting times, uh, get in contact with, um, with the school, um, with Aaron Boynton or with any one of us board members. Um, and we'd ask that they send a letter of interest and in why they think they, uh, they would contribute to the board. There was one person that got hold of me after the last position was filled, so I'll reach back out to that person. Okay. And see if they still have an interest. Sounds good. Anyone has any ideas, please uh, <sighs> beat the bushes for that. Uh, we have the Berlin uh, three item 3.2, the Berlin Board Goals Draft. We talked about this uh, some last meeting. We have adopted the SU Board Wide Goals, and then we wanted to go with some um, perhaps some Berlin-specific goals. Vera had three goals in mind, and then um, I had mentioned at the last meeting that I had some further, uh, wanted to think about perhaps adding another goal or two, um, and I invited anyone else to, to contribute uh, to that. You can even do that still tonight, but you'll see that on page eight of your Berlin packet. Um, Vera, you can tell me if I got those right. I was jotting notes um, from the last meeting, and then the uh, goals one through three came from you, and then goal four um, was something that I wanted to add both about school climate and community engagement. It's maybe a little more specific. It may be encompassed in the SU board goals, but I, I wanted something a little bit more specific. So that was my, my proposal there. I, I open think that up to this discussion. captures what I was thinking perfectly, and I love that you added number four. I think For it's good. number three, would it be appropriate there to say ensure policies and procedures? Because we had talked about procedures and they do seem to be a slightly separate even though attached sure happy to, to do that any other comments mm -hmm. about our Berlin mm -hmm. specific board goals with the one you added Chris yep um, where you say, and community members as teaching partners. While I think that idea is good, I wonder if saying as teaching partners would actually like scare some people away as far as just as partners and whatever that role looks like. Some people may not consider it to be yeah. teaching even though it is. Yeah. Actually, I thought of that as I was writing it. Would that be threatening or... You know, what are we actually saying there? We just want our community to be a part of the education of our children in some way. So, and I that, mean, that I, I totally get what you're saying, and I agree that yep. it, like, would be, but I think putting that word there might 
make people think, well, I'm not a teacher. That's for the teachers. Yeah. To do. So how about just striking teachers? Could yeah. do that. As partners. As partners. Partners, and then it leaves it open. Yep. Sure. I have a question for, for Aaron. I wonder if you had or would like to have input into the goals. I'm sure you have your own. Uh, well, I think it's, it's, it's good that you're setting some um, accountability to some degree, I guess. Um, and I think anybody would agree with these. You know, we, I think as within the school, as professionals wanting to see academic growth, of course, um, professional, development, professional development for staff, of course. Um, policies, procedures, you know, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to argue with. And of course, number four, um, you know, that's that's huge for our school, making sure that you know we're all working together. You know, I at our uh, last two staff meetings, I've talked about professional learning communities. It's kind of a, a buzzwordy kind of thing, but um, that really defines everybody involved as part of that learning community. So, you know, the wordsmithing around teaching partners, I think it's implied that we're all working together as a learning community, whether you're a board member, a parent, um, a grandma, grandpa, whatever, <laughs> a community member, um, central office staff, um, or a non-teacher, you're all part of the learning community. So, uh, you know, these are all things that I think, that I know that we're always working towards and to have them stated, I think, is appropriate. So, I agree. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Aaron. Is there any, do you see any big gap in like one area where you'd like to see more clarity from the board or understand, you know, what the board's goal is in a, in a particular area? Or is this, are these broad enough to cover it? I think they're good, yeah, I think they're, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Can I, I'll, I'll add to um, my opinion on the increased academic growth and success. Yep. Um, I would like to see that defined more, but unfortunately I don't think we're at that point because we yeah. haven't seen exactly where the school quality committee is gonna go with what um, recommendations they're gonna make with what assessments to use, what's in alignment with the new report out system and I think as that goes forward and progresses we can kind of make that more defined as to what we want to see for when we say increase like what direction um, as far as maybe a percentage or a, mm -hmm. a count of some kind mm -hmm. for increase I think it is vague right now but I think we need to leave it vague for a little while until some of the work of the school quality committee is done and we get the report out from is it in October that we get the next report out on stu yeah. student yeah. learning outcomes? Yeah. So I think I mean, it's hard to put the carrot before the horse until we get those student learner outcomes in October. Yeah. Cool. I think slightly vague is okay. Yeah. I mean, as long as we're working at increasing, then going the other way. You know, well, it, it kind <laughs> of is to me, it's the same thing as far as people that were talking about the word guarantee. I mean, you, you know, you don't necessarily want to put in a number that you can't necessarily reach, even Very though true. your goal is to be working that way. So. Yeah. Okay. There's no action item on this, but, um, you know, I think we just, we now have these goals in place in perpetuity until we decide to amend them again, um, or the next group of board members five years from now takes a look at this and if there are Berlin board members five years from now, <laughs> takes a look at this and says, what the heck were they thinking? Um, so I don't think there's any anything to be voted on here. Everybody's okay with, with those, with that one amendment of uh, striking. Two, and adding and procedures. Oh, yeah, and procedures and striking teaching. So I think in doing that and then changing this date to as far as Change the last the updated and having the new date to show it's new date. All right. Next on the agenda is um, 3.3, the SU board goal number three, community engagement, where all of the local boards were tasked with coming back to the SU board um, with what we believe community engagement means. 
Didn't we do that at our last meeting? So we did. We talked about it. So, so what we have in the packet is my attempt to write down what we talked about, but uh, we need to, I think, as a board, approve okay. what we want to go to the, sorry, to the executive committee, I think is where we're supposed to report this. 11. Uh, yep, page 11. Oh, okay. On what is, what is the purpose of board level community engagement? The executive committee is asking each of the local boards to report back on that. So I tried to jot down some of the comments that we had in our discussion at our last meeting um, we talked about community level engage board level community engagement, um, the purpose of it being to promote the school, to solicit feedback from the community, to guide the board in creating a vision and goals for the school, to raise awareness of what's happening at school, to bring community assets into the school and school assets back out into the community, to foster a general sense of community for the town, to engage our town in the common goal of successful children. And then there were two other pieces of this that were not necessarily what is, but I think further clarified what we were talking about, that there is a difference between the school communicating with parents and with board level community engagement, that we were, mm -hmm. wanted to make a distinction between those two, and also to distinguish between why we communicate and the nuts and bolts of how we communicate. Um, because in our discussion, we started getting into different ways, whether it's newsletters or online or on, uh, other things, on how we communicate. We're supposed to be focused on the purpose of board level community engagement. So I took a stab at it. We can play with this. Um, the, you all can amend this any way that you see fit. But gleaning from what we talked about at the last meeting, I came up with this statement as the purpose of board level community engagement. And you'll see that I did this document right after I did the last one. So there's yes. some common language here. <laughs> like teaching partners? <laughs> That's right, teaching partners. <laughs> to develop trust, pride, participation, and support for our school and to engage the Berlin community as partners in the success of all of our children. I'm going to open that up to, to discussion, to amendment, to uh, adding things to it, to taking parts away. Well, Peter, do you have any general thoughts? You weren't with us for the conversation. No, and I want to apologize for that. I missed it. I was glad to see you had a quorum. <laughs> um, but we, we are looking now at the purpose of, not necessarily the implementation. That's right. Yep. Not the, not the how we would do it, but why we would do it. I saw an example tonight of somebody whose idea of how is different maybe than... Yeah. But uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of ways, a lot of hows. Um, no, I think your, your description covers it. I'm not sure that I would add anything. Okay. Other comments? I think it captures... I would say everything that we discussed that night. Would we take out teaching again in front of partners? I, I would. Um, it's like so many things, you know, the, the, the worry is great, but the, the uh, difficulty is in the implementation. That's right. And, you know, yeah. if we're serious about it, then we do need to think about that part of it. We've talked a lot about engaging the community and just thinking about why we do it. We want people to understand what's going on in the school. We want support for the budget <laughs> that, we're, that we're proposing. Um, we want other support within the school. We want the school to be a welcoming place, a, a center of the community, um, all those things. And I tried to capture that in you know, trust, pride, participation, and support. I do, as a Berlin resident, want to say that the lack of participation with, even just tonight at the Act 46 meeting, yeah. we had technically one Berlin member there. And Stephen is the U32 principal. He's a Berlin resident, but he wasn't there as a resident. He was there as yeah. the principal. And it, it's just sad to me that there's not that um, engagement to come out and voice their opinion, whatever it is, whatever side they're on, or just be part of the, the conversations. Yeah. And I think it's sad because every other community had way more representation there from their communities than Berlin. Yeah. 
And at, for me, I feel like we're doing something wrong, or I'm doing something wrong if we can't get people That's part of to the engage how, right? um, in those conversations. Mm -hmm. And they're important conversations. These are things that are going to affect everyone in our community. And yet they don't come out to share their opinions. And I mean, they don't, I, I'm not even getting any, I mean, I get very few, which is mostly my neighbors and relatives, right. their feedback on, you know, whether it's budget or Act 46 stuff. But other than that, I don't really hear a lot of people yeah. For being front page news stuff, you would think there'd be more conversations even happening right. out there. And I, I, are you guys getting Karen, you come in, into contact with a lot of Berliners. <laughs> I know, and and I I do think some of it is. Some of it is people feel that they have elected people into the positions to speak for them. You know, whether it's school board or select board, you know that well. That's what you're there for. Which I do agree with, but I think even tonight I had a hard time, like, do I want to be part of that lawsuit or don't I? I mean, I want to support the people in our town, but I don't really know where they're thinking or what they're thinking or why. Well, but I, I think another thing, and it, and it goes back to the engagement, if we went through and said what had each of us done to promote the fact that we felt people should be here to give their opinion, we probably didn't do as much as we could have. Definitely. And, and that's the thing as far as that being consistent. I mean, because even people picking up the newspaper isn't the same as it was. Yeah. You know, the world doesn't get delivered to your door anymore. You have to go and get it somewhere. Yeah. It, the Times Argus costs money. You know, there's, you can't get into all those articles online to read unless you're paying a subscription fee. Um, you know, I don't think... I don't think unless we really reach out to people, even if there's information on websites, people don't necessarily know when to go looking. It's about pushing information out to people. Which is a huge issue and a huge problem, and it has been yeah. forever. I mean, it, I, a part of it, I think, is that folks are, are put off by big issues. They, just, they think, oh, you know, this is just more than I can deal with. We see that. You've seen that in school budgets. I mean, you get you know you work to get people to come out, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's support or just to, to talk about it. Um, and yeah. it's, how many people do you get at a board meeting? You know, two or three, yeah. if you're lucky. It, me, that's, it, a, that's it, more it, than usual. Those are you know those are big issues and you know, local issues. This yeah. is a district issue. It's even more complicated, and I think people are put off by it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that there isn't a solution there somewhere. Right. Uh, I think certainly. Worcester and and uh, and uh, Callis are smaller communities, and and they do have more uh, more communication just locally, mm -hmm. and and which causes people to come out. East Montpelier, I can't account for exactly, but um, I always compared our school to East Montpelier, you know, as size wise and student numbers wise and so forth. But. Um, so I don't want to cut this short, but it is a late night already. Um, if we're focused in on you know the purpose of community engagement, is everyone okay with with this draft statement going to the executive committee as uh, our summary of what we think the purpose of board level community engagement is? Yeah, I'm, I'm good with this out, but I have a question: Will the yep. executive committee be uh, like a clearinghouse for the next step, which is what we've just been talking about as far as? Uh, suggestions and recommendations of what has worked in other towns? Yeah, it's one of the big three goals of the executive <clears throat> committee um, to, to deal with community engagement. And the draft goal is that by November, the WCSU boards will define a purpose and strategy for, well, it does say and strategy, for yeah. board level community engagement and identify training needs. So the executive committee wants to keep pushing this one mm -hmm. forward. Good. It's something every board struggles with, sure. and so we can maybe work on this together with a common goal of getting better at community engagement. Um, okay. So in October, the executive committee uh, will draft a written purpose and strategy for board level. This is all gonna get pushed. It's probably not gonna get done because mm -hmm. of Act 46, but, mm -hmm. and then in November that the boards approve a purpose and strategy for board level community engagement. So we'll see how much work gets done on this, but it's... Um, but uh, I almost feel like we're dropping the ball at a really critical time. You know, if, if everybody's hands are going to be busy with yep. the Act 46 stuff, but this is the very time you need to be actively engaging the community. Engaging, yeah. And so despite the fact, if 
the whole WCSU is going to work on it, it seems like we really ought to have a clear plan as far as getting information out to people because yeah. otherwise it's going to be too late. You know, November and December, you, you, you've missed it as far as yep. making sure people are turning out. I can, I've done a lot of work on this already on strategizing for the renovation um, and just having worked on this goal with the board when I first started on the board when we did board goals. Um, I'm happy to bring a draft in October of some of the strategies that we can all maybe take a look at, comment on, decide what we, you know, how we want to engage with the community. Um, I just don't think you know, we can't do it tonight, um, but I'm happy to put something on for October um, and give you something to bounce ideas off from um, based on the work that we've done before. Is there any message though that we want to be putting out as a as a board? I mean, I know any mm -hmm. of us can, as an individual, say whatever. But as a board, is there any message that we want to be putting out to people about upcoming meetings or or what's happening? I think Berlin residents really. I think a lot of them do not understand that they do not get a vote in the polls. Yeah, <laughs> you know about what decision the state is making. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think I I think I've relied too much on the central office to do some of that communication, but they are. We may have a different approach than the central office would have to this issue. All the boards probably are taking a different different approaches, so maybe it it should be more on us to get the word out to Berlin. Because as I say, I, f I feel like we're going to have missed the boat as far as, you know, we're going to say, well, let's revisit this. And meanwhile, another month will have gone by. Yeah. And we haven't informed people. Were you talking specifically about Act 46 communication? Act for I think yeah. there's two yeah. things that actually we need to start considering. Budget's going to be coming up. Um, yep. Act 46 is the first and foremost that we, we I do think we should be. More proactive. I'm not saying, I don't want to make a statement. I think we need to put out some bullet points of, you know, highlighting this is what's going on. The draft um, articles. articles are out there, and just bullet proof, or bullet points of some of the discussions that came up tonight. Um, and nope. between Scott, Chris, and Floor, and Matt, I mean, they might already have some of that done. So maybe we can reach out to them and see if they've captured some community um, information that they've already sent out mm -hmm. and use some of those resources so that the communities are getting the same information, I guess, I rather think, than an opinion or... I think what you said is key, though, bullet points, because like, there's going to be a Times Argus article. We know that. David Delcourt right. was here. However, will people have access and will they read a whole long thing as opposed to just seeing some bullet points of you need to be aware and here's how you can find out more. And I think you bring up a good point. I don't think people realize that they're not going to get a vote on this. Like it's not going to go back and be on a ballot. Once it, they make us do this, it's a done deal. Yeah. And That's when that decision is made at whatever point, I'm assuming in November, that puts all this hurry up and rush right in the holidays, mm -hmm. like the, the, the worst time to reach mm -hmm. out to people and expect mm -hmm. them to come to a meeting. And that's why I think, you know, do the Act 46 maybe the next couple of weeks in different ways, in different forms, and then right after that follow up with, you know, we are in budget season and please, you know, reach out. So the meetings. Like these um, committees that are supposed to be formed, making sure we get out the the information as far as when those meetings are for people to know that you know they can go and and find out more um i will say i do kind of find it a flaw um like i get the emails of when the school quality committee is coming up but not all of you get it right and the same with other subcommittees that are happening mm -hmm. out there if it's like i'm on the negotiations thing so i got the email about that for the training coming up but I do think it's nice that everybody gets that information there is this but sometimes but that's that different. changes yeah and so I'm not, I guess what are you right. requesting because I'll write a note I guess I'm not sure what I'm requesting it'd be nice if there was 
a better... I'm not sure everyone would want all those notifications. And that's part of the problem, <laughs> but I do think it'd be nice... I mean, it's hard for us to know when we should put something out to our community of this is coming up, this oh, meeting yeah. is happening, yeah. when we don't know because we're not on the sub subcommittee right. or... Right. Is there a district calendar? Well, there is yeah. a posting, though, requirement for yep. public meetings. We do the following. We send it to the town office, and we do post it in the locations mm -hmm. of record. Right. So, but I think it's the subcommittee piece that a lot of people lose. Okay. They're happening all the so, time. Okay. It's more the subcommittee stuff, like okay. the school start the school quality, the school start time, the school quality. I mean, the executive committee is pretty much consistent. And the policy used to... There is a new, there's a consistent policy. There's a consistent first, policy. First Monday, unless it gets changed. So it would be the these other two subcommittees that are being formed, plus school start time and the school quality. So notification to all board members. Well, I, I don't want to speak... For I think Chris made a question. point, though. I don't know that everybody's going to want. I don't want to try to solve one problem and create another where people are saying, no, I don't want it. So I'm not really sure what. What are you saying in, as part of community engagement that we as a board ought to make more of an effort to get notice out there out. to Berlin yes. that school quality committee is meeting, policy committee is meeting? The school start time. I mean, I think there's, uh, there's a lot of people that want to weigh in, but they don't. For some reason, they miss. And in order to do that, we need to know right. mm -hmm. these things are coming up. Not maybe not all of us. <laughs> maybe it, not. if we don't all yeah. want to know, um, maybe it's one of us to do. So that. maybe it's well, up to us, as you know, if Corinne's on the policy committee, to send out the next meeting date on the policy, or maybe it's up to me to send out something on the school quality and when our meetings are, and more information about that and what we're doing and what our charge is. Mm -hmm. But and I maybe think for you, like the executive committee. Mm -hmm. But I think that speaks to the put it out how. Right. You know. Is it, it front porch forum? Is it right? Um, when you say it's up to Chris to put it out for some or, for something, where where is he putting that out? <clears throat> Which we haven't figured out yet. Yeah. I, I think at minimum, like it should be on the school's website homepage for anything coming up for meetings that month. Which I don't think right now those subcommittee things are on there. So the subcommittees are not in the school. Calendar. I don't believe so. No, I think they're correct. saying no. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just, but I'm also I'm just thinking about how many subcommittee meetings we have, and if we have the monthly calendar, and we have 20 yeah. school events, and then we have 10 school board committee events, you kind of. Well, I think I is on the school board page. Is there still a school board calendar which kind of was used and then not used? I think so. I mean, if it's still there, maybe that's it, and that's one of the places we can yeah. point people to. Is that, yeah. or on, on a WCSU calendar? I mean, just some easy place. To, that's not going to be the only way to tell people, but you know, to be the consistent online place to look for it. So the calendar yeah. that you just. Just identified, you'd like that on a school website and the WCSU website? I think it can just be on the WCSU. It's, it's all about telling people where they can find stuff. Just point people okay. to that. Yeah. So WCSU website, it may be there, I just haven't. I think it's there, um, but as part of our board communications, if we decide what forums we want to put that into, we point them to that if you're interested in coming to any of these subcommittee meetings. It's just a matter of reminding people every once in a while where to look. This calendar doesn't really, this doesn't tell you at what time or where the meetings are. It's just something to give you an oh, idea as you're what day they are. planning mm -hmm. meetings when, when they're going to be. Yeah. The cynical side of me is going to say we get one or two people at these meetings at our regular school board meeting. Are we really going to get anybody at the policy committee or executive committee or school quality or school start time doesn't mean we shouldn't where we go the to out, but effort and consistency as yeah. far as people learn to expect and know where and to I go think to that's where it. I have you know I used to be so much better about putting things out there whether it was on front porch forum yeah. or reaching out to other members within the school well negotiations people can and it's not a public meeting it's okay. no no bargaining. So um, we should be inviting them to something that they couldn't participate or be there for. Negotiations is different. Right. I, did one of us say that? I, I didn't. Well, you said I'm on negotiations and I received all the emails, but none of you knew. Right. They, the, the board. Or your alternate would be 
invited to participate yep. in interest based bargaining. Right. Okay. So I'm going to move us along if we can. I think the best we can do tonight is know that we need to try to communicate better about Act 46 and the budget. We've got to think about how we're going to do that. I'll try to get some communication out there about Act 46 between now and October and our next meeting, October um, 24th. 24th. And, Oct and on October 24th, I'll have a kind of list of the different ways we've communicated in the past. And maybe we can set priorities around what kind of information and in which of those methods do we want to communicate it. I think I have such a list. I think, yeah, I think you shared something with me. And I'll send it to you and you yep. can do with it what you want. Okay. So let's plan for a discussion on the 24th about can the how-to. Can you send the list to all of us and as long as we oh, don't sure. reply oh, yeah. all? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Please. Yep, I can share some of that stuff ahead of time that I have to. <clears throat> but I will do my best to um, communicate out in a couple of ways between now and the next meeting about Act 46 and about the upcoming budgets, Perfect. budget discussions. So board vision value statement. Yep, three point four Berlin board vision value statement for handbook. I took your comments from last time. I took um, the comments that Corinne made by email and I drafted, redrafted this um, statement that's in the handbook. It's a, it's a little bit different from what you saw last time, but hopefully slightly. I, I know the one thing that I was wondering is still says school productions. Do we have a school production? There is a drama club that happened last year that was and so that's it was an school after school production. production so I'm not sure and I'm not sure if drama is happening again, again this year I mean if it is a after school then I think I should say after school I mean last year yeah, so uh, it was two high school students of three high school students that volunteered their time to do the rehearsals after school and it was done also through the um, AD stipend, right? And I'm, I'm not. Sh I don't know what the plan is for that this year. Yeah, and we haven't talked in detail about what that looked like for the spring. I think it would be a hope to have something for kids to be able to experience drama. Um, I would like to help make it more successful. I think there was some challenges last year with the staff and time and things like that and space. So um, those things I've been made aware of, um, you know, perhaps ensuring that we have staff that uh, can be, you know, present and, and consistent, and um, to see it continue in that sense, then it's a good opportunity for kids. So it's a commitment. Yeah. Aaron, did you have any comments or suggested changes for the handbook message? No. I would plan to just um, update the Eric's um, Eric's stuff here and just indicate that there's a vacancy at the current time. Um, under the list. Yep. Um, please send it to us in care of. A little word missing there. Okay. And I'm not sure where that extension two came from for Bill Kimball. No. Oh. I think it should have been zero. Oh, all right. Good to know. <laughs> Who knows where that will send them. We extension, so I'll double check that there might be something I didn't know about. <clears throat> okay. Usually the shortcuts are like on 304, so I don't believe his extension is too. All right. Could you let us know? It might have been an old phone system from way back. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll let Aaron know. Aaron, is that still your extension? Yes. <laughs> Good to yeah. check. Would you prefer they not have your direct extension? No, me? No, it's fine. Is that fine? <laughs> Excellent. All right, we'll do, I'll just check on the extension. I'll make the changes to um, Eric's information here to let, indicate that there's a vacancy. Am um, I the only one that doesn't use my at u32.org email? I use both emails, and I'm trying to get better at using u32.org. I, I didn't think Chris used that one. <laughs> I, I have it, and I check it, but I, I don't check it as well. So, yeah. Well, speaking of which, is there an issue with email? Because I was a little confused. So my problem was I was using besboard.org, which I think has gone away since we went to Gmail. Oh. Uh, and I, so I was using an old used. board address. But there is an all, I can't remember what it is, but there is a. a I think it's B-E-R-L-I-N-S-B. 
So Berlin SB. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. At, at u32.org. At u32.org. Okay. Pretty sure. That's how we set them up. So there is a, an address, a group address, so you can hit everybody on the board, um, but I was using the wrong one. And then I think that puts Aaron in it, too. He gets the same. Oh, okay, the good. The board ones go also to Bill also. Google and Aaron. Excellent. I was just wondering, like, if you're leaving out the O in mine because I was, I was standard. also doing that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Figures that I'm the not standard one. That's that's right. All right. Three point five is the Act Forty Six update. There was lots to be updated tonight. We had a very very long discussion um, about Act Forty Six and. Um, I guess I would open up this time for, for further discussion um, about Act 46 um, in respect to the action agenda action item that we have for 5.2 and whether or not to um, join the legal action. I wonder if there are any comments from our members of the public who would like to be heard here tonight. Uh, I'd love to call pardon from Berlin, Berlin parents. So I've been able to be part of uh, an email group, so I know a little bit more about what the lawsuit entails. Uh, but there were some great points made tonight. Um, you know, Matt, Matthew said we're a, we're a board, speaking of the supervisory union board, that doesn't sign on to things without knowing what they are, which is incorrect because we certainly, not too long ago, voted to uh, sign on to an uh, amicus brief about another issue that wasn't written yet. So in that case, he was incorrect about uh, that statement about the board. But the points that were made that made sense to me were that probably we could wait, but I think giving a qualifying statement or a qualifying vote saying if the AOE imposes a merger on us, we will, um, we will join a lawsuit would make sense. At this point, they haven't denied our AGS, our alternate governance structure, which keeps all those wonderful members in place, helping and serving our kids and our communities and, and, uh, and doesn't uh, impose a decision on our communities as, as well. So, But if that happens, uh, I think you could probably do a qualifying vote to say, yes, we will join the lawsuit um, against the Board of Education or the state if um, they deny our AGS. So um, that would be my suggestion, because they may look at it and realize that the debt issue is something that uh, they are going to have difficulty um, when it's challenged constitutionally. And the purchase of the school community property uh, for whatever amount it is. So. Thank you, Carl. You've been, a, you've been a big part of this for a long time. You've put a lot of, of work into it. It seems like the debt issue was been an issue since day one. We all kind of kept on, you know, we knew that was going to be a big deal. And um, I just say that I'm frustrated that after all this time, we have um, no resolution on that. And so it seems like an insurmountable problem um, with a lot of the way that it's written. I actually came up with a possible solution for that too, but I don't know if it's legal because I just brainstormed. But if it's, if the, uh, consolidation is imposed, um, then the new newly formed district, the single district, could, play, could pay a yearly stipend to each town uh, to regulate, give a regular amount, and maintain the current ratio, tax ratio per, per community, which if right now East Montpelier, out of all of the budgets combined, play, pays a tax ratio of like 37 percent. Berlin probably pays 42 percent. Uh, then maintain that ratio by 
the, the we'll call it WCSU, giving a stipend to each community to make sure that their town tax rate decreases at an equal amount that their school tax rate went up because we're paying for East Montpelier's bond. So it's a, probably a complicated mathematical formula, but if it's a budget item for the new WCSU, and they say we're gonna pay a town, each town a stipend to maintain, maybe not tax rate, but tax amount. Um, I don't know if it's legal, mm -hmm. but it's doable. Isn't that one of the suggestions in the, in the letter from the, the group that's promoting the lawsuit? They have three no. scenarios. Oh, did, did. And one of them was to e equate local and school taxes so that okay. taxpayers paid the same. Okay. Oh, okay. And I, I don't recall exactly how they came about it, but any of those are just incredibly complicated. Yep. And I'm not sure that they address the question of uh, bricks and mortar. What the, currently the town of Berlin or the Berlin school district owns, mm -hmm. or any other town for that matter. That's that's another. That's kind of another piece of the puzzle. But I, you know, I think there probably are ways, and unfortunately, our, our time is compressed mm -hmm. uh, to come up with the best one. Mm -hmm. I do think. Value of the building itself in the land. Well, See, I, I, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I mean, the last time a town wide assessment was done was 2007, 2008. Yeah. Yeah, in there. And I'm, I'm but sure again, that, that assessment is still very different from just having a regular outside appraiser. Mm -hmm. right. Well, as far as the value that's added to the newly formed, imposed WCS, WCSU. It doesn't matter what the value of the building is because if it's liquidated, then WCSU will get one dollar back for that for that uh, asset. But so, I think it does make a difference if Callis is valued at ten thousand and Berlin is, I mean, prime location and it's number. Right. I mean, yeah. there is a true, there is a difference even in liquidating for a dollar. There's still a value that goes to the building. But the town, the, yeah, the communities won't get it by law. That's that's no, certain. they won't. But I think t I still think within the agreements that there needs to be something about the difference in the values of each property coming into this one bucket. It's not like when they built U thirty two and everybody put in to build this. Our buildings are there. Our land is there. And I think Rowan's land is probably the most valuable that, out of the WCSU district. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we get we will lose a lot. Lori, can you help me understand why in, in the estimates of tax rates post merger, Callis, I can understand yeah. why Callis goes up. I can understand why Worcester mm -hmm. goes up. I can understand why East Montpelier goes down. Try to understand why Berlin goes up so much and Rumney actually mm -hmm. goes down. A lot has to do with your equalized pupils and um, the information that we had been sharing over the years was based on the voters approving the merger and there were huge tax um, savings and incentives. So a lot of the numbers that were concerning in the past may be different today because the old laws aren't in play anymore. For instance, it used to say if you merged, your tax rate couldn't change by more than 5% up or down. Well, that doesn't apply anymore. And it used to say there were so much in savings that would go throughout the district. That doesn't happen anymore. So what we were talking about was coming up with what is the real tax impact and why yeah. is it that way um, for each town. Yeah, so I'm trying to understand it. Because the news isn't as horrible as it was. It used to be ta Callis was going to see a 20, 20 cent tax increase. They're not anymore. So it's um, but it's roughly not, is it not nine. as simple as saying Callis is paying for Berlin and Middlesex and East Mount Players debt because 
Middlesex actually has a little more debt than we do, yet their taxes are going down and ours are going up. It, it's a totally different formula. It's based on equalized pupils, and you have a larger population, and it's increasing. Yep. Um, it's also based on your current budget. So if you're frugal and they're not, they're, they're right. you know, they're, the that's cost per pupil is greater than yours, then it's going to cause them to have a savings. I think that's what I'm getting at as far as like the Berlin's, let's say, values or the budgets that we've, the spending decisions we've made have probably been much more conservative than mm -hmm. some of the other towns. But it's not just about that bond, right. it's also about what we're spending in our per school people. budgets mm -hmm. per pupil. True. Um, so we're going to take a pretty big hit by all estimates. Um, well, it's about six cents. It was worse. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, the, with the formula change today that I was just quickly trying to pull together, and Bill would like to present this okay. for the group at large, um, I was comparing this year's budget as if we had merged this year. Okay. So a tax increase of six cents was um, in our line, and nine, like roughly nine cents was callous. Everyone else was going to go down, even Doty. Worcester, the town of Worcester was going to be a savings because they're going to lose a, a small schools grant that they would have to pay for individually. And if that loss of $90,000 is spread throughout the district, um, that's another consideration. Both Callis and Doty are going to lose small schools grants. But, Lori, even though you said it, it was going to be worse and it's only six cents, that's still six cents that people can't afford. I mean, whatever they, our taxes went up this year, there's a whole lot of people that just can't afford it. And whoever said in the WCSU meeting that where rates are going up, you might see people selling homes and all, I, mm -hmm. I think that's true. Right. I mean, if you can't afford it, your only option is, yeah. yeah. Which well, is this is on the primary yeah. residence rate. So again, you you might be talking non-residential too, or or others. Um, but for six cents, that's like six sixty dollars on a hundred thousand dollar house. And if someone did qualify for the rebate, they would still get the rebate on this. But it's still six cents. I understand that. Six, still six it had been though. So I think at one point we ran the numbers. I understand. Yeah. And we have to describe it to the. To the voters right. and help them understand. So it's 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 a piece of the, this whole puzzle that, mm -hmm. that um, is, is a reality that we might have to face at some point. Um, so we're, I'm, I don't know. I yeah. can't speak for Crystal. I think we're just trying to get our yeah. heads around it. You know? I think it's so in our faces right now that we decided mm -hmm. to keep it under three million for our right. renovation, and they decided to spend a lot. And I think we've also done a really good job of keeping our fund balance at 4% or right. or even more right like at this current time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, either we spend like crazy yeah. and That's make it go away, mm -hmm. yeah. which is not the frugal right thing to do. Or it, all that money that we have paid in doesn't stay ours. It goes into the pot for everybody, which again, I mean, it's not right. Well, I don't think we should spend like crazy, but I think Eric's sentiment was right as far as getting the <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm not trying to belittle the six cents, but to no. me, I was actually breathing because when this was 15 to 25 cents for some of our towns, I was holding my breath. I was yeah. like, this is... That's, that's six cents above what the increase will be for a level of service budget this year. Exactly. So that could be 12, yeah. that could be 12 cents, mm -hmm. right? right? 15 exactly. cents. So. And that's on equalized... Actually, it might not be as bad because you're over the 100%. That assumes your common level of appraisals at 100%. So your town's at 102 or 3. So it'd be less than that on the local level. Yeah. Um, I only was asked to run it on an equalized yeah. basis. Yeah. So you're right. The spending for equalized pupil is a huge piece, and some of the towns are like much um, higher cost than yours. And, and that was a vote. Can I just make this point, too? That was a vote that, that we did in, in last year where a, a few of the formulas went and moved from what they were to equalized pupils. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was like, I know Berlin's gonna take a hit on this because we were getting double the equalized pupils. And at the time, I didn't know 
that Callis and, and um, Worcester had uh, two kids in their preschool. So we're not only getting more equalized pupils, that those other towns actually had less coming in mm -hmm. as well. So. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's the thing that really bothers me about Act 46 and has for the last three years or so is that so much time and energy is going into how to make it work, what's going to work, what's going to be the long-term thing, instead of looking at how do we grow the families who are in Berlin. You know, how do we have more support around families in our community? I, I can just think of all these different things that there hasn't been time for because everybody is so busy with additional meetings or lengthy topic discussions here where you're just not able to get In other words, doing what you should be doing. Yeah. And that's why I'm here for Bill about central office being overwhelmed with stuff, you know, stuff well, that they're not used used to spending time on because they're working for us. Exactly, and I just, I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel because yeah. if we're not merging, first that means there's a whole lot of work, I think, into making that, but if we are merging, then there's all the work on that, and there are, any way you look at it, fewer board members who need to deal with more than usual as far as you're going to have like 12 to start, but then just 10, most likely, working on issues for all of the schools, including all of those subcommittees and stuff like that. And I just don't see it's going to be any easier to keep board members going a longer distance than we have been. I mean, we all know there's been a lot of turnover in Berlin in the last few years, and I don't see that changing if you're going to put more on them to do. You don't see it getting any better, I see it getting worse. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, and still not getting to those very things that I just said, I really think we need to be spending time on, and instead, we're going to be having to look at more information to make budget decisions on <coughs> more schools and on maintenance of schools, and just all these different, all these different things that just gonna take a lot of time. I have a question for Carla. I thought I heard tonight somebody speak up about the Harwood Union Unified District not being what they thought it was going to be. Do you have any details on that? Like, what was she? There's no cost. To? We're definitely going up, and there was there. Some of the smaller schools are feeling uh, um, that they don't have the an adequate voice uh, and uh, travel, and certainly there's a. I think they already came up with, and I'm going to get the figure wrong, but $13.1 million bond for some sort of improvement that there. So any cost savings might be go out the window pretty quick with a $13 million bond well, as a result. Of, we've ever seen what the cost savings is going to be no. by merging. I, I, I can't remember in any of 46. It's not clear that there, that there will be. It's hoped for cost savings. Right, and I mean, in, in all the time that's been spent in the last three years, I can't recall anybody being able to point to anything because even if a school did close, which I don't want to see happen, that's, that you can't just take that out of the equation because then you're gonna be adding busing students to places, more students in places where maybe you're gonna have to have more teachers at other schools. I mean, it's not just a, you know, you could close the school and therefore save money. It's, it's not that simple. Yeah, it's not. If I'm not mistaken, it's in the, in the letter from the, I'm going to call it the Lawson Committee, um, with a lot of data in, in statistics in there saying that, that uh, few of any schools have realized the savings. Yeah. Schools that have not uh, which is you know, sad to say, but that was, that was forewarned and has been and, forewarned well, in the last couple of years. And that's those who receive the tax incentives as well. Right. Have still have not. But really I think that's what that. some of the general public has been thinking that, well, the reason Act 46 is good is that there will be savings and that our taxes will go down. Yeah, and yeah. and right now we're all talking about how it's going to go up. For some towns. For the, at least for in our town. Yeah. I just want to maybe speak for the other side of the issue. No one here is speaking to that. But, okay. you know, beyond... 
I think they very quickly determined they shouldn't promise any financial savings out of this because it's not clear that there will be any. But there will be arguably efficiency and increased educational opportunity in a, in a merged district. And, and you know, I've always said that we, we've been on the path to doing that and we can do that outside of uh, outside of a merger. Maybe not everything. Maybe it's not all possible, but I do want to make sure that that point of view is, is represented that there are some efficiencies in merging with that. Um, and perhaps increased educational opportunities as well. I think WCSU is an example of that. I mean, for almost 50 years, we've been a merged district. And we've made it work, and, and it's saved over what would have been otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, we really should be an example of a merged district as opposed to saying, well, we want you to be a different kind of merged district. And I think some of the uniquenesses in the elementary schools should be celebrated. And, and we do, our, our schools are in different places and therefore have different opportunities. And that's okay. There, there are no schools that are exactly like in the state or in the country. I mean, they're all a little unique. In I have a question, and I was wondering, maybe since Carl's here, if he could, he might know the answer. What came up tonight? It made me unclear on how the legal costs would be paid. Does it have to be private citizens paying, or can it be school funds? I don't know legally if you can use school funds. Um, to no, sue we the can. State. You could be support the lawsuit and not okay. automatically say we're going to pay twenty two percent of it if there are, you know, if there are a hundred towns or whatever, if there are ten towns. You don't have to commit to uh, a lot of what I'm reading is that there are a lot of uh, legal professionals willing to do this pro bono. So right, That's I just I wanted to double check because <laughs> Chris so. McVeigh mentioned something about it, well, and that made me wonder if it had to be when the gentleman was there offering to write a check, right. if that was the only way you could pay for it. I do not know the answer, so I just wanted to bring that up as you go to consider this tonight. Yeah, I think the cost that is the very question important. needs to be. Um, Answered very unclear, but I think opting in or out in whatever time doesn't bind us to anything mm -hmm. before any cost is accrued to our right. local districts. Yeah, and and I don't know the answer, but for as much as work may be pro bono, I'm sure there are still expenses mm -hmm. um, that are involved. In sure. That that's yeah. what needs to, to be paid. So I guess I just want to bring us back to the state of the world as we know it today. We proposed as a supervisory union an alternative governance structure. We said, have said that we are not in favor of merger. And that's where it stands. That's with the State Board of Education. And they're going to make a decision any day now. No oh, end of November. November 30th. Yep. November. Mm -hmm. um, and it's at that point we'll know. or are forcing merger. Um, so there's really not a lot. I mean, we don't have any control over what the State Board of Education is, is going to do. Um, but one thing we can do is send, uh, this is my opinion, send a very clear message. And you know, I, I, I do this with apologies to the, to the administration, um, uh, to Aaron. I know a lot of people would love to have a clear direction and say, we're just, if, if we're told to merge, we're just going to do it. I would love to have that clarity, but I don't think the timing is right to just um, hold up our tent and say we're not going to fight it. I think we need to send a message that we want them to approve our, our, uh, our proposal and join the lawsuit sends that message. Chris, I think that's a very interesting thought, and I heard that mentioned during the earlier meeting, and the question I have is how would that occur? A clear message from all the schools in our district or from the district or from, you know, how yeah, we you saw a mixed message, I think, in the straw poll. Uh, yes, absolutely. We a clear absolutely. Message if we as a board decide. Well, I think the clear message um, suggestion was separate from the straw poll. What didn't involve joining the lawsuit it was just you ought to send a clear message. And I think that's true. And the question becomes, you know, how do we do that? Um, you know, can we as a board send that message to with the executive committee and, and say, please, you know. I think that message would go to the subcommittee of who's been working on communicating 
with um, the Agency of Education, which would be Floor, Scott, Matt, Matthew, and Mr. Who would be a likely body to do that? Yeah. I would think they would be the likely body, but I, I, I'm kind of speaking kind of like on this I, I think they've already had their say at the, at the state board, and there's nothing. I think they're well, if, if, you're, to do. if you're saying that, meaning that if all the boards did that, that then a one message would go as opposed to yes. there being yes. various messages, maybe not from all. Right. Yeah. Um, because yes, That's I exactly I, yeah, I I agree that a message should go into the to the um, lawsuit folks. I believe there was a deadline to let them know. I think that response should perhaps be, we are interested, we really need to find out more. Um, I heard a mixed message on the deadline. I heard somebody say a deadline coming right up, and I heard some others say there's no deadline to join at any point. I think you can join at any point. My understanding is they were looking for to have an idea if we were going to join. A show of strength to the AOE as well, I think, is what they're looking for. They want, and I think last time I read it was about 15 towns. And that's the message I'm talking about is you want this district to join tonight. This, and, and knowing that we can come out if AOE does not, the uh, State Board of Education doesn't decide against um, force a merger, then we don't have to be part of the lawsuit. Even if they do force a merger, if at some future point we decide it's not worth the fight anymore, we pull out of that. Um, but I don't think you send that, you decide you're not going to fight tonight. I think tonight you send that clear message to say you're, yeah. you're willing to join. Um, yeah. and can always so you're suggesting that we decide yeah. tonight to, to join the lawsuit? That is what I'm suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be a clear message. <laughs> <laughs> is there further discussion on Act 46 before we move through the rest of the agenda and then get into the action agenda? Um, I'm sorry, we already did five points. The, <laughs> the action including the appointing people, correct? Yes. Okay. Let me check. Five point two once the uh, motion is made, more discussion can happen there. Yes. So okay. I think That's four point right. one, four point two can be done. Okay. Okay. Reports to the board. Four point one administration and four point two finance. Good evening. Uh, you have my. I think I hope you have my board report. <laughs> um, okay. If you have any questions, oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. it is in the packet. Oh, that's right. If you have any questions, let me know. I just wanted to mention a couple of things that are important. So, uh, one of the things that I'm doing on Tuesday, October 3rd at 7 p.m. and Wednesday, October 4th at 9 a.m. is a copy with the principal event. Um, we added agenda item 5.5 .5 to appoint a member to the articles committee and 5.6 appoint a member to the debt committee. Are, is there anyone who's interested in serving on those? I'll volunteer for one of them. Oh. You interested in either feet? I'm nervous to volunteer. I would normally want to volunteer for one or the other and I wouldn't really care except for negotiations are starting. Yep. So um, I'm not sure how much those would overlap. And I don't want to miss either one of those meetings. So yep. I can be a backup for one of these. Okay. But it, I don't think negotiations has a backup person now anymore. Oh. I think once you're right. in, you're in. Okay. Right. That's okay. what they said. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So I'd, I, would, I would always have to go to negotiations. Okay. But I'd be happy to be a backup for, for one of these. Yeah, I will. Yeah? Do you have a preference for either one, either the articles or the debt? Nope. Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. <laughs> um, are you more familiar with the articles at this point? Or are I, I think I would, because I'm on the transition board, I'd like to get more familiar with the articles. Maybe so you do articles I, and you do yeah. debt. Is that all right yeah. with you? So I'll make the motion. Thank you. <laughs> I'll make the motion to appoint Chris Winters to the subcommittee. On articles. On articles and appoint Pete Schober to the subcommittee on debt. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And if you guys could make sure to let us know when those meetings are, I'm, if okay. I can get to some, I might like to yep. 
we'll try to go listen to those. Yeah. Um, 5.7 7 is to appoint a third voting member to the supervisory union board. Eric Chase was a voting member. We've accepted his resignation. Corinne and I are the yep. other voting members. I, no, you're I'm, not, you weren't very, that changed. Looks like you can be if you want to be. Was it, didn't the yellow cards go out to the ones who were voting members tonight? I, don't I think so, yes. Because I so got, got a yellow, yellow card. card? Yeah. No, I don't know why. I thought for sure it was Eric that... I, I know, I'm pretty sure I am. All right. Eric had one, you had one. I can go grab my book if you'd like. It's right on my Adrian. I have the list. If you could, that would be good, because I great great thought it was. So we know if we have to make it official. I'm yeah. positive I am, because I voted on some stuff earlier this year. So oh, I hope no, I am. she voted. Maybe she voted. Well, I think at one point during the year, it changed. Yeah. It in changed March, when you guys re, re But I re-came on in March. Yeah. Right. And maybe he didn't want to do it anymore. Maybe. So we'll find out. Oh, hopefully it is you. Then we don't have to yeah. have a 5.7. So future agenda items, right? Yeah. Let's, oh, let's... oh, six oh, there is no board order. Just letting you know because that you already, we already did, it. did it. Okay. Thank so you. Carla has been good about emailing you, so, so we can just put another. Seven that. future agenda items. I have down a communications plan strategy, which I will give you a draft before the next meeting. Yep. Board member vacancy. We'll hopefully be able to deal with that if we have someone interested. And of course, Act 46 will always be on there uh, forevermore. And well, maybe not forevermore. I think um, we was, could start else? a conversation too, and it doesn't necessarily need to be at our next meeting, but prioritization for budget. Budget prioritization? Stuff. I think if we could get that out sooner to central office, like where we're, what we're thinking, or yep. it might save them presenting okay. a first draft then. Got your book, Bill? She's good. She's, so good. She's already there. We didn't need to fill in. Disregard yes. item so 5.7. It it's then Chris, Vera, and I, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so We're the voting why members all along. Yeah. Okay. I think it could change somewhere. I think it could change somewhere, yeah. Huh. Okay. That's a good thing, because I thought I was a voting member. <laughs> 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 Anything under board communication? Oh, any other future agenda items? Not that I can think of right now. Mm -hmm. You guys have anything? No? I'm really excited. I don't even know what you guys talked about. I came in. I, I, I've been <laughs> bouncing around. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't you know, even see Rodi tonight. I've been like three different places. Right you can watch the tape later. I yeah. do watch the tape later. <laughs> <laughs> These nights are tough because they have a lot of yeah. a lot of catching up. Uh, anything for board communication? We talked about earlier. Any communication think, that we might um, want to make out? I think we should do something for Act 46. So, Bill, I want to coordinate with you to see if there's anything coming out of central office on Act 46 and what's happening and where we are. Update. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe. I wasn't planning anything coming out. Okay. But we should talk. Yep. Dave will probably have it in the paper. <laughs> I need to sign it. It might be in the paper. <laughs> I have a question for you, Bill. I don't know yeah. if it's appropriate time. Yeah, well, that's why I usually come in and say any questions. Yeah, before, before we adjourn, you might as well. Yeah. Right. The uh, question is about the school start time yeah. committee and whether or not it will continue. I don't think it's going to meet <coughs> Peter right now. Because my understanding, the intent of the committee was to reduce activity, not uh, spend your time or anyone's money at this point, but to continue a low-key educational from right. the committee. And I don't think Karen's really, I, I looked at Karen for that leadership because she's been one of our major yeah, right. people on that right. to say, what do you want to try to do? And she mm -hmm. and I have kind of that So I, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Else is what I'm Could talking. you ask that? Because if, yeah. if, if there is some intent, uh, especially for the long-term uh, committee members, it would require reconstituting that committee, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it is, it, it didn't get, it's, it, it's really just kind of like in suspension. It didn't stop the com committee, so the committee could be called back. The, book, the SU didn't take anything to. No, no, it didn't turn out. That was the intent. It was just saying, when it, we have time to bring it back, bring it back without having to re appoint members and all that. But yeah, in that letter, or in something, it did say about continuing to get out right, some information. Right, to do that thing. And so, as soon as, yes. let me, let me, when I talk to C. Karen, I'll. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll ask her about it. Great. Anything else before we adjourn? Good job. Thank you all for being here this late. This was a long night for everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mean. So we're, we're adjourned. We're adjourned at motion. 948. 948.